Darby yes. E. The Swedes. And- Yes, Did it and again. Ariana Grande. Uh, she just premiered Yes And right here on the Roland Ryan Show account yesterday. It. We were looking up uh, who produced it because the vibe it was giving us. I was like, okay, yeah. there's like a scene, kind of like a, the Saltburn thing with the song that you're going to do in Friday Free For All mm-hmm, today. Kevin, mm-hmm. who's that song? Murder on the Dance Floor, Sophie Ellis Spectre. Okay, kind of uh-huh. gives me those vibes because Sam did this thing on KRB's Instagram yesterday from the elevator all the way. You could totally plug Saltburn in this inspired. song into that Saltburn oh, yeah. Felt a little scene. bogish. I guess uh, I need to do another video is what you're saying. No, no, I'm just oh, saying, like, no. you keep can, it, going? it sounds you like a, a, a song that could be a quick <laughs> a, a quick scene that mo- that hits in a, in a show mm-hmm. or a movie. Mm-hmm. And the vogue part comes in because just like in Vogue, where Madonna talks and the, the beat is still behind her fast, but she's talking slow, kind of reminiscent of that a little bit. But Definitely. That's good. That's cool. Yeah, and, and I say this, the Swedes because Max Martin is on this, and he's he's worked for everyone. He's written oh, every, for yes, every yes. pop song you know that's successful. Yeah, he's <laughs> a very rich man because of a lot of songs that we've all loved. Okay, so we're going to go over the unspoken office rules that you should never break. And I'm going to start out with the very first one that made me like, almost cackle laugh because the way it's written is so funny. I can just see a sarcastic, angry woman telling you this like if you're a newbie in a meeting at a job Mm -hmm. so the line is if you've been in a meeting forever and your boss says okay anything else uh, you keep your mouth shut. Oh, for the love of God, please. <laughs> keep because your mouth shut. inevitably there is always somebody, keep your and mouth it's usually shut. somebody that's either new to the company or somebody that's kind of like on a lower level that really wants to show off, hey, I've got something to say. I was listening. Yeah. There's nobody else. Was. Right. I mean, the way they keep your mouth shut. And then you've shut. just added oh, another yes. 20 minutes to the meeting. <laughs> or just email them on your own. Yes. Or stick after the meeting yeah, and ask. The meeting. Yeah. yeah. Be like, hey, I just wanted to kind of elaborate like, more. Hey. Can we circle back? to what you said in the beginning <laughs> yeah. about if we had any questions about why we need this kind of report. Can you walk us through that one more time? Do you think bosses even like having meetings out there in this, in this world? I think they need to check the box and say, yes, I've communicated this to the team, so they have no excuses to say they did not hear it from me. I told them. Sometimes they don't have a choice in the matter. Can't they do like a little video and then just email it to everybody? No, because you won't watch the video. No. <laughs> no. They don't watch that the is proof. But they put something in there <laughs> uh-huh. and you have to say... Uh, like email a me back. Yeah, email uh-huh. me this All keyword right. so I know you listened. <laughs> keyword. Here's this is kind and of funny. I share it with you guys. This is kind of more yeah, social so rules, Eric. This next one, the right. social rules. Let's... The third time you walk past someone in a day does not require a hello. Say hi the first time, nod the second time. Ignore them after that. Because that's just weird. Uh-huh. If you just keep passing the same cubicle because it's getting, you're going from point A to point B and you have to keep passing the same cubicles. If you keep saying hi every time you walk by, that person will be like, what's wrong with you? Like here, hi. Here, my, hi. Buddy, my buddy Joe, he's an awesome sales guy. I love Joe. He's helped me out with so many things. But his, he put his office in the, in the, kitchen. Like, the kitchen. In the break room, yeah. The break room, which is smart because he wants to see everybody. Uh-huh. But sometimes here, we, we only have like two minutes. Right. And then him and I start talking about football, and I'm, I forgot what I was supposed to do, get water. It's like, oh, I forgot I'm on the Rule and Ryan show. <laughs> and you hear the show come back on, you're like, oh, oh, oh I got on here. But yeah, he moved his office there because he's loud, you know, and he interrupts everyone else when Over he's on the, the pit, phone. the sales pit, so he's in there working. Uh-huh. But. So he, he can be as loud as he wants But you're right, though, so the third time I don't have to say so anything. So third time, just ignore him. because I weird. smile. I wouldn't just straight up ignore or just be like, if they're doing their work and you're just kind of... You guys just, don't smile. You're just like... No, I would smile or whatever. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't go... They, oh. Even they probably would be like... I don't find myself having to go back and forth multiple times. The, the one like, after hey. it on the list, it, this is one that really, really gets oh. home. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How about this one? It's home for him. Okay. What is this? Uh, it never reheats something smelly in the, in the it office. It does have to do with smell. But here's the next unspoken office rule you should never break. Kevin. Don't be the smelly person at work. Ugh. If your odor is more pungent than most, invest in perfume or cologne. Although, too much perfume no or cologne can also make you the smelly one at work. Well, what's oh, yeah. the comfortable yeah. medium with y'all? I know what it is. Zero. No. We don't. No, I like good smells. Just, just, you know, like a, little, detergent. a little mist and walk into it, but you don't bathe like, in it. Yeah, Like, I have cologne on, but you would not like be able to smell it unless you're, like, close to me. Like, up on yeah. his neck. Like, right. I should be able to smell it. Like, Ryan's like, what are you, 12 feet away? <laughs> yes, I can't smell you. Yeah. And also, in terms of what you put in the microwave, I think Sam probably always has leftover salmon or something she's trying to bring oh, in here. Which not, it says on the fish. list, you no, which is foul. Do not reheat fish. Yeah, it's, it's 6 a.m. Yep, yep. That's what I really want, guys. Stinks up but the whole building. Especially right before somebody else is going to use it because then uh, you cross-contaminate the fish stink. Pesto. 
and Ryan loses his mind because it got a lot of garlic in it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, you trying so to kill vampires? Christina? Kevin? Christina would be bring that. Uh, so oh, that was the worst. On, on okay. text yeah. at 37530, when I said we're going to talk about unspoken office rules, somebody texted on this show, this text line, well, like Christina with her eggs. She would mm-hmm. microwave, microwave eggs, and I'd walk into the kitchen, I'm like, who took a dump? <laughs> uh, it was no, so she bad. brought them in here. Oh, yeah. We're like, you can't eat that in here. That's not no. right. It, it's not like she's no, wearing a vacuum sealed so box. If yes, you bring a scent linger. into the vacuum sealed mm-hmm. box, it will not leave. No. Gonna... And it's not really cool to leave the door open here because we are broadcasting on radio and we need the silence of the vacuum. We have a lot of people at 8 o'clock also that listen to our 930 break, I guess. They want to know what happened in our meeting mm-hmm. yesterday. Why don't you go ahead and tell them, Eric? Oh, yeah. Because I was worried about somebody wore a lot of cologne mm-hmm. last week mm-hmm. and they've been wearing it for years and just I couldn't take it anymore. So I said something to them. Nice. I didn't say it. What's that odor? I didn't say it like that. That was nice. And they came and they didn't, they might have had some on, but I didn't smell it. Nobody smelled it. They smelled mm-hmm. great. So, yes, it worked. So if somebody has something, you're not, just be nice about it, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Kill them with kindness. Yeah. So uh, I appreciate. I love that did. scent. Just less of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of the unspoken office rules that you should never break don't complain about everything. Constant negativity is not fun. Even if you agree with the person's take, then you're that person. that Nobody wants to agree with you because the, all that person ever does is complain. Mm-hmm. So you're like, ooh, you want to be, like, w- tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who your coworker is that you agree with all the time. And if that's the negative Nelly, then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, those two. All they do is sit in the corner and complain about everybody. And their that. coffee mugs and why they're not working enough. I also say one in there, too, is if somebody brings you an idea in any business, listen to it. Don't just try and dissect it and make it different tear it down or change it oh yeah that's good but i'm gonna do it this and then by the time the the plan is nothing that you came up with that's like hollywood and that yeah. way every movie is yeah every uh, movie you have an idea for a movie you then they change play, it. and you and should then 15 people change it and then they make the movie out of their changes you should acknowledge <laughs> people's contributions too oh yeah people love pat on the backs what was that stat kev about five years ago instead of money people want to pat on the back Yes, and really? so well, ever since we haven't gotten a raise. Yeah, no, we just get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good job, good job, Kel. There's a bat on the back there. Yeah, yeah. I think like, it depends on how many years you've been there. When I first started answering phones at KRBE, y'all, I thought the biggest mountain I had to climb was going into the program director's office to ask him for a business card with my name on it. Because I was doing so much stuff here. I was seven days a week Rula on KRBE, seven days a week, but I was not full-time. And only full-timers got cards. And it would help me so much if I had a card that said I worked here because of all the things I had to do. And so I remember being so nervous. I could not. I thought I was going to throw up because I had to go in there and be like, I want to ask for business cards. Do you know how simple that was for him? He was like, oh, yeah, it's fine. You want I cards? still don't have business cards. Uh, does <laughs> anybody, does anybody use then, business you need cards? Business cards. Now we don't. Now it's like, here's my Instagram. Like, I think my business card has our phone number from here. I don't even have an office anymore. Oh, no. Right? no, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no I got nothing here. I'm just like a... If you like the email the number that starts with 260, ain't nobody going to answer that. <laughs> just leave and do my work at home. No wonder office oh. spaces nowadays are, are oh, empty I know. So around the country. Empty. So empty. Okay, so those are just some of the rules. You should not... You just you don't break the rules. Okay, coming up next, we're going to have some fun. Texans are in the playoffs for the first time in five years. Yeah, what an amazing yeah, season yeah, yeah. this has been. Hey. You know, as a, as a longtime Houstonian, you, you just kind of don't want to get invested emotionally after you've been hurt so many times yep. <laughs> with your sports. And D'Amico Ryans has really turned this team around. Chester Pitts is our original Houston Texan. I think I even texted Chester a couple games in. I was like, wow, that D'Amico is so special. Said, when we had him on yeah, oh, yeah. in the summertime, he's like, D'Amico's the man. I'm I know, and I was us- reading that to him because I know Chester's been a huge... Titles. Any Texan that ever played with D'Amico or knows him, they were so excited for him to be the head coach because they knew the magic he's got. Well, he and wanted this job. Now. This is so great. Okay, we're going to talk about to Chester Pitts live in studio next on the Rule and Ryan Show. 4.1 KRBE. It's the Rule and Ryan Show. There are so many things happening this weekend. Of course, the marathon is going on on Sunday. Yeah, marathon, yes. And uh, we've got rodeo tickets on KRBE uh, as we announce the big rodeo lineup. Uh, really quick, I want to remind you guys that next Thursday, we're kicking off KRBE's Secret Sound Contest. Now, this is a contest that's going to run weekdays, Monday through Friday from 7 to 7. We're kicking it off on Thursday. So next Thursday and Friday, uh, starting at 7 a.m. It is a secret sound we're going to play for you and we're going to take caller 104 if the first person that's caller 104 guesses the sound correctly they win 104 dollars if that person does not guess the sound we're going to play the sound again another time you don't know when it's going to air Mm -hmm. and when you hear it then the jackpot is 208 dollars and then if that person doesn't get it right it goes up and it goes up by 104 dollars every time 
It increases by $104 every time there's a wrong guess on the secret sound. Now, how can you have like a leg up on the contest? Go to krbe.com right now, sign up to be an insider, and become a KRBE VIP. Insiders get the exact times that we're going to play every single day. And who knows? We might even send you a hint. So go to krbe.com right now to sign up to be an insider. The contest starts next Thursday. It is 7 to 7. It is a chance to win hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Nice. Because it all is about how many wrong guesses there are where the $104 keeps multiplying. That's why you want to be listening the entire day because you want to hear what other people guessed. Make sure you don't guess guess that again. Yeah, if it's your guess and it's the wrong guess, then you know not to guess that. Mm-hmm. Then you think, okay, then what is it? What is it? What's the sound? So we want to reward your listening skills with free money. Woo! KRB Easy Resound. Yeah. Next Thursday, elevator, the January way. the 18th, 7 to 7 is the window to play. Yeah, Chester's on his way up. Yep, Can I mention real quick another giveaway that we have later today yeah, sure. on my show? Because sure. it's Harlem Globetrotter tickets. Ooh. Oh, that's so fun. I know. Did you try and be a Globetrotter? You said okay. you were, or a general? You, they really, won't let you on the team. You I be really there. wanted to, but I asked Mark. My husband and he was like, I don't know because then we would have to get a babysitter for Santiago because it may be too loud. I don't know. He just wasn't feeling it. But I feel you like baby it would headphones be on so him. much fun. Family friendly event. Know. They have those yeah. noise cans well, like I, headphones mm-hmm. for babies. Remember the picture? I had him yeah. in one of those, and oh, it was yeah. so funny because it's oh, yeah, his, his face. Face. Oh, yeah. his little pumpkin face. Uh, uh, but ten forty seven, I have those tickets. Okay, so great. But that I'm show is so that. fun, y'all. I. I have memories of being nine years old and my parents and taking going, me to go yeah, see the Harlem Globetrotters. I know, maybe I'll, I'll try and... It's so entertaining. I'll be like, babe, I'll buy you a beer. Like in the 80s and <laughs> 90s, they were like... We gotta go. I mean, even in the 70s, they were like stars because they're on TV. They'd play the games. They'd yeah. do the wild, wide world of sports. Oh, oh yeah. yes, the wide world of sports. And then yeah. they'd show part of the game and then they'd cut to the other like alpine skiing and stuff. But I love the globe trout, Curly. Yeah, all those guys. Right. I got to meet so, Curly Neal. I met Metal Ark. I met all those guys. I have. And when the, they're, they're playing at NRG Arena on February third, correct? I believe so. Let me confirm that real quick. Yeah, Thank I, you for asking. I think that's the date because yes, it's the same February third. Yep, four pack. Okay, yep. so ten forty seven with yeah. Sam. The Harlem Globetrotters will be in town. Get some tickets. Thanks. Chester, Pitt. hey, hey. welcome in, Chester, Woo. our original Houston Top Texan. Top of the morning. Hey. How's everybody? Are you a Globetrotters fan? Did you like the Did you watch the Globetrotters growing up? I, I love the Globetrotters. Oh, my God. There's nothing more fun and entertaining than your Right? Kids. Do you remember, like, it's, the original guys? Well, they weren't original, but the, the big yes. the big guys were, like, the curly days and the uh, metal art. They had a big chubby ref. Yeah. <laughs> so round. Yeah, I, the, I, I, I remember. <laughs> I remember. Didn't they used to air it on TV? Because I never White saw them live. White World Sports. Okay, yeah, yeah, they were yeah, famous. Right. They had a TV show. Yeah, yeah they had a cartoon, that. even. This oh, was, they met Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> we're showing our age. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> the, the young listeners have no idea what's going on right They're now. They're like, wait, what's well, TV? We stream. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's TV? One texter said the Globe Chatters are on my bucket list of life. Well, you can win those. 1047. 1047. Yep, four pack. Got okay, you. so we are so excited that Houston Texans have made the playoffs for the first time in five years. Wow, what a season, Chester. You knew this. This is crazy, you right? You felt this, right? You, you, you remember when, when when we came in before the season, uh-huh, and we uh-huh. sat down and talked, and I was mm. I was in here sweating. I was so excited and, and running around and having uh-huh. a good time. Um, you know what? In anybody who knows D'Amico, anybody who's played with D'Amico, anybody who's spent real time with D'Amico knows, you know, just a what kind of man he is in his heart. Mm-hmm. But then when you take that kind of man and also make him a savant. <laughs> when it comes to the game of, yes, NF, yes. you know, the, yeah. the, the the sport of football and, and, and being placed on that platform in the NFL, um, he has just, I mean, he, he has absolutely exceeded any expectation that that could be there for the first year. Um, I remember I said that I expect him to go, by the way. I mean, he look, he may not pull off with what Coach Belichick pulled off, <laughs> but I'd be shocked if, if he's not the next John Harbaugh. Wow. I don't, I, wow. Yeah, he he's going to be a I expect him to be a, a fifteen year and if no ten year coach in you uh-huh. know the National what do you think Football is the, League. The best part about him is because he can relate to everybody and he's so inspiring or it's cause his mind is so I mean, you've seen him play and I I think the the best thing that he does is he meets every individual man where they are mm-hmm. and finds a way to get the most out of that player in that moment when it's needed and necessary. Lots yeah, of injuries this year. Lots of injuries. Talent. That's a that's a gift and a talent all rolled in one. When you when you you brought it up when you talk about injuries mm-hmm. and that happened in this game. You know mm-hmm. it's a hundred percent chance in the NFL that you're going to get hurt. That that's the way this sport works. So you're wow. going to get hurt. That 
you've got to find a way when you lose this guy or you lose this guy or you mm-hmm. lose this guy, the next man up in that position has to be ready to go. Chester, when you played, you bring up injury. Do you remember, like, what was your most painful moment? Like, the most painful thing you ever had to endure as a Texan? Physical. Oh, I mean, I had my my fair share. And you, I mean, you mean my personal yeah, injury? Yeah, your personal, like, 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 you're like, oh, my God. That's what you caused well, on somebody that happened to you. Got you. I yeah. push this guy in the nuts. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't like him. I see this left thumb. Yeah, I push it as far in his eye as I can go. I, I felt... Brain matter. No, no I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Have I'm been kidding. A hit I'm you kidding. took or something, you know, where you're like, oh, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to die. So, my, uh, so you know, I'll give you my welcome to the NFL moment. Okay. Oh, man. Let's oh, hear yeah. It. Uh, <laughs> this is early in my career. We're playing the Tennessee Titans. Mm-hmm. We're playing Tennessee Titans here at home. And obviously, when it's a divisional opponent, there's always a little extra mustard on the game. Just because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, you see them twice a year. And, yeah. and they used you know, to, they, they have all of our records and it, it, the whole Euler thing. The whole, exactly. A lot of so, they're, you know, Angst. so especially early, early on, there was always a, lo- a whole lot more chipping going on. Um, regular drop back play, Dave uh, threw a pick. <laughs> and this is when I was young. And mm-hmm. frisky and <laughs> you know athletic you know still had all Real my cartilage he's fast so i took off like the dickens uh-huh. because i'm gonna go make this tackle mm-hmm. i'm when i am i'm i'm not when i say all i see is the runner mm-hmm. all i see is the runner and i'm i mean wide open dead sprint i'm running like i ran my 40 at the combine. <laughs> My Absolutely <gosh>. as <laughs> yes, fast as have. I could go. Cream yeah. Long strides. Robert Smith. Ooh. And he actually didn't dive through my soul because he could have <laughs> ended me. Yeah. Uh-huh. He could have ended me because I didn't see it coming. Uh-huh. But he just kind of firmly planted his feet in the ground and leaned into me. Uh-huh. And when I saw, you remember the cartoon with the, the Tweety Birds oh, the stars? and the stars yeah. and circles <laughs> going around? Yeah. Oh, I my God. Like, what just happened to me? I, Oh, my gosh. I've never in my life been hit like that. And I'm telling you, he did not. Like, he could have. Do you yeah. have the wind out of you when oh, you land? Oh, the wind. But you don't see it coming. I saw you. stars. It was it was definitely we, we there, were play series, the next series? there were oh, series man. that went by oh, you missed that it. I have zero recollection of. Oh, I played wow. it. Oh, you still played it. I saw wow. it on film later. Wow. Uh-huh. But I I couldn't tell you what happened. This is before uh, they put you in the tent. Yeah, yeah. No, no. this was this sure was, this was a different course. NFL. Mm-hmm. So you were yeah, you were up yeah. and playing the next game. No, next play. No, the next, next play. Next series. Yeah. series. I mean, when they Are were, you kidding me? I mean, you I mean, got we, knocked I, that senseless. I, I mean, I had a little bit of a window because uh-huh. you know the defense take you know we, sure, right. Chicago uh-huh. happened. Defense goes yeah. on the field. Um, wow. You can be right. on the sidelines going Whoo! like you're bent over, like Whoo! and it, then you're like, okay, it, let's go mm-hmm. because it's all of that. Uh huh. Plus, you're embarrassed as hell, so you don't really <laughs> want to say. You made ESPN's top ten. Yeah. Not so, not so top ten. Not so did. top ten. So, oh, yeah. Wow. So that was. Uh, you guys also. That was pretty funny. Offensive lineman going like, back. Yeah, you get your knees hit. You're like they're rolling up yeah. on your legs and stuff all the time. So that so that, so that is actually how the, the roll up is how I, that that's what ended me. That cost me fifty million bucks. So I'll never let it go. Oh, oh my um, god. Which guy did you the roll? You when you're, when you're, it's called friendly fire. Oh no. One of your own guys. Oh no. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't uh-huh. realize it was your own into guy. Your leg and, oh no! And, and the thing is, whenever that happens, it always comes from the side. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And last time I checked, knees don't bend that way. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh. No, they 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 go uh-huh. forward forward and back. They don't go left and right. right. That's, oh my that's how it God. works. So when someone uh-huh. comes from the side, does he feel guilty about it? Always left and right. The person that did it by accident. I mean, I mean he didn't. He didn't. I mean, send you flowers every year. Was that with the Seahawks the before you left? He sent him flowers. It was, it was, it was, no, no, it was, no, it was here because I remember you had never that's been injured. Yes. Yeah. So that's a little background for the listeners who are just tuning in. I wouldn't want the flowers. I'd want the fifty million. You can send me a million a year. At least ten percent of it. Fine. That guy keeps playing. Yeah. Those that just tuned in. You know, Chester Pitts was an original Houston Texan. You played eight or nine seasons with us. 
I play eight with the Texans. It was eight, and he had not been injured until that eighth season. Until you got that, that injury. That injury we're talking about so now. You were, I remember I and saw you, you for a at the game when you oh were on your gosh. crutches. Don't, don't bring it up. No. <laughs> and then it didn't go your way. That was contract year, right? That was contract year. Okay, yeah. so then after that, you did not get re-signed to the Texans. You went to the Seattle Seahawks. And I played there. Uh, you played one season or two there? Just one. Yeah, because they went uh-huh. to the playoffs. Now, did they tell season. you that? Yes, that was, that was beast mode here. That was, remember the beast quake? Yeah. That Man, that was uh, so so that was my last year. But do they tell you that that's not why they're gonna resign you? I mean, you know well, it's your ankle. Well, it's, they they it's, think. It's, well, the no, knee. no, it's the it's the it's the business. business. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. When, when you, what, what can you? It's not what did you do for me? Is what can you do for me? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you have to prove that you can do it, and then they get then you get paid on what they think you can do. Right. And when you have so, what's your take really on players injury, that yeah. don't want to like they hold out? Because they don't want to get injured and they want a bigger contract. What is your take on that? But even though they signed a contract and they're not obligated. Wait, to answer that question when we come back. Oh, yeah. Answer that question when we come so back. I'm curious about that. What do you think of I'll that? We're talking to Chester Pitts, the original wow. Houston Texan. Because the Texans are in the playoffs. Uh, play, and- play that, play that uh, Homer thing. Oh, yeah. We- <laughs> That is, hey. that is epic. <laughs> every time that plays, I, I smile. I smile every time. Let's go Texans. More with Chester Pitts next on the Rule and Ryan Show. Studio, the original Houston Texan. Chester, Chester Pitts, Pitts is Yay. here, and hey, we're Chester. very excited. Oh, the morning. Three thirty tomorrow. We are going to watch our Houston Texans take on the Browns. And the Browns are cocky as well. Like the, the reporters and that, the media. I've seen all this stuff. Like, oh, CJ Stroud, big deal, rookie. I'm like, uh-uh. this is have not they, your typical rookie, have, is it? Keep on with that, they, y'all. Have they not looked at his numbers this year? I know. Have they not watch any tape. But, like, but, but they're but they're riding on high on Flacco. You know the win from you know a couple. of... Oh, when we, when we missed uh, like seventy percent of the main guys, yeah, we did. We didn't do very well that game, and we were missing quite a few of the better players on the team. But so. now they're back, mm. and we're good. Yep. Let's see what happens tomorrow, three thirty. If you're going to NRG Stadium yes. tomorrow for the game, make sure you go early. Uh, if you're going to take a bag of any sort, check the clear, clear bag, bag policy. Yeah. They do not play ineffect. with the sizes of those bags. Mm. Super in effect. Like yeah. if yeah. you don't have a clear bag, you are they're going to they're turn you away. So just do the right thing. I think Come we out, should have fun. Oh, should they go earlier, Chester? Do you think we should tell everyone the game's at one thirty? Absolutely. Tell, tell them it's at nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's like so you know, that they're there. Everybody's got that member of the family where you got to exaggerate the time. But they're out there drinking you know. and tailgating. Well, I'm like, get in the, get in there. But that's yeah. why you got to eat. That's why you got to tell them really early so that they're there at seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, they're gonna have their fun in the tailgate. Yeah, and party like crazy for two, three hours, mm-hmm. and then, get then they're like. Okay, you know what? Let's go inside the game. You gotta pee. Because what happens is they'll, you know, they'll be there and they're in the tailgate just having an absolute blast. And their yeah. TVs in those parking and lots TVs, all the time. And they watch the game and, and the seats are paid for, but we'd rather have the butts in the seats. We'd rather have a Houston Texans fan yeah. in the seats screaming and yelling. And that's right. Than the noise. A Houston Texans fan in the tailgate screaming <laughs> and yelling. Now, before we went to the break, Eric, you asked uh, Chester a question. I just, uh, Every year, you always see players hold out. They signed a contract and say they got three years left, but they had a killer season. Mm-hmm. And they're oh. like, I want to get paid. Because if they can get cut whenever, they're not guaranteed. Right. So I can see both sides, but it's like people say, well, you signed a contract. But you were talking about how you got hurt and yeah, lost but, $50 million. Well, see, that, that, that's what, What's your take? Uh, here's the thing what people just don't get. Like, football is, is fun and entertainment in a sport. Mm-hmm. Football's a business, baby. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Football is, is a business. Mm-hmm. And in the same breath of any moment when a team decides based on whatever criterion they want to decide Mm -hmm. that you aren't worth a contract and they can cut you, Mm -hmm. why in the world would, if your value and your assessment of who you are and what you bring to the table Mm -hmm. and if you believe it's worth X dollars, why would you not fight for that amount of money? Yep. So it, 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 a blade cuts both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And and life is a business, right? But you, I mean, but the owners and the league are kind of the ones that write the rules. Even though you know it is collectively negotiated, mm-hmm. you know the team has a union. But at the end of the day, there's never a moment when the players have more power than ownership. It's always going to be the owners have a leg up. 
but you have to negotiate the best deal that you can negotiate. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, and it, I'm not going to go practice. I'm not going to be at the well, game. And how we withholding heard your stories? labor. That's only yeah, where they just don't show up for training or they're like, no. Because they, they get hurt, like Chester said. It's over. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be over. You know there's that There's nothing well, else to talk about. So, you know, minimizing being in the way mm-hmm. until you really make your money. Then, you know, but once you make your money, then, hey, then I... I'm I'm a guy that always says like once you well, once you've gotten your money once you've been get, you know been paid mm-hmm. you know that that meter of you know you know injured versus hurt mm-hmm. that that meter you know that that line of you know can I go is is it a little bit sore you know once you've been like paid top mm-hmm. market compensated yeah. You get your ass out there no matter what's going on. Okay, you go to okay. your point, this so. is a great point you're making also because uh, what's been re- really relevant on Amazon Prime the last year is the documentary about Jason Kelsey with the Eagles. I don't know if you've seen that yet. Have you I seen it? I haven't watched it yet. I heard it's really okay. good, though. So before the whole Kelsey name became a thing with the Swift and all that and Travis and blah, 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 Jason Kelsey's Swifties. documentary was on Amazon Prime. You might be seeing them next week. And the reason they <laughs> did that is because Jason Kelsey is a very loved personality with the Eagles in Philly, mm-hmm. like the way you were here with the Texans. Offensive line. And Center. they, yes, and they didn't know if he would resign. So the, these Philly filmmakers decided to follow him on what could have been his last season. And mm-hmm. If you watch that documentary, it shows him in the hotel room on an away game. And he's got these like, uh, God, we've seen that physical therapy. The thing they stick on you like it's a... No, it's the it's the stickers when you're doing an EKG. The electrodes. The electrodes, mm-hmm. but it's supposed to um, send signals to your muscles to help you recover faster. It sends like an electric pulse. He says mm-hmm. whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, he has to do this because he cannot recover. He just cannot recover. He's like, I'm old in the NFL now, and yeah. I'm hurting all the time. And he talks about Very whether true. he should re- retire or not retire. And he goes... You know, I could go for another $15 million, but, I mean, I, I I am hurting. Like, is he injured or is he hurt? He was hurting, but he was not injured. Think about it, they play a game on yeah. You guys play on Sunday, then you got to play on Thursday. You're, how does your body <laughs> even recover? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I Here's learned that from you, it's, Chester, it's, how long it re- takes for y'all to, to, re- to, fo- to, to really recover. recover. And how long? That's, that, but that's the, that's the biggest thing that changes as you age. Mm-hmm. You know, an older player can still play and play very well. The problem is doing it back to back. Your yeah. recovery time, yeah. the recovery time Increased. as you age yeah. and as you get older, the recovery time increases. And it yeah. does, and if you can't recover in enough time, because here's the thing: you still you got to practice. Mm-hmm. You, you you have to be out there. You have to be ready. You got to take the reps. Right. And, and even though as you get older, you absolutely get smarter in the game. Yeah. Everybody still needs their reps. So the, a lot of times guys have to walk away from the game or get cut from a game, you know, get cut from the game. And it's not because they no longer can play. It's because they can no longer recover. Two questions, wow, that's, Chester. That's okay, so point. when was the last year you played professional football? 11. Okay, so 2011. It's been that many years. Do you still feel physical pain from your years of playing football? Does a bear in the woods? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you guys. I was going to that question. Yeah, my husband question wasn't Could you play right now? Could you the, the, play? Like, oh, uh, no, no, no. You're so skinny now. I don't, think you could, I don't think you could uh, stop it. Absolutely anyone. could not play right now. Uh-huh. Let's let's make that's affirm that one, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe like against Whoa. seventh graders let's you could. Let's settle down. <laughs> 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 what I'm wondering is, I mean, because you've not, got not, the... Not at this ripe old age. Hell But you got, you know, you said that as you get older. In 2012 or in 2013... Could I have played every other week? Absolutely. Okay. Every other week. Yeah. I got you. Ab- absolutely, I could do that. The problem mm. is, there's just not enough. You're not training there's, like you used to. Yeah. Well, right. it's, it's again, it's just recovery. The recovery. So what it mm-hmm. takes to maintain the amount of strength mm-hmm. that is needed to play the right. game, I can work out on Monday. I can work out on Tuesday. I can work out on Thursday. Work out on Friday when I'm young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, look here, player. When uh, <laughs> <laughs> look here, look look here. When you get when you get a little older. I, I got you on that Monday workout, and I might see you again on Friday. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because what, do you you want me to work out, or or you want me to go practice? Yeah. Be- because I can't do both anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. And actually, another great example visually too is not just you, Chester. It's it's JJ Watt. It's Rob Gronkowski. Anybody who is out of the game now, but they're still present on the screen, you can absolutely see the the diminishing size of them. Oh, not yeah. that they're scrawny in any way, but they are like just. Cushy, these, I haven't seen him lately, but he's going to be the. Beat Wait, but now, now look here. Kush is a different breed. Kush he, he's doing the thing. Kush, Brian Kush, Kush still look like he could play. He's still big. Oh, man, Kush, look, <laughs> Kush looks good. But 
Kush looked amazing when he was. Yeah, I mean, come on. Built. I mean, he, did, he didn't. Offensive he was, lineman, though, you guys were born be, that way. Yeah, you got these big boys. Yeah, and the thing is, most offensive linemen aren't. You know, they're they haven't made humans yet that are mm-hmm. designed to be walking around three fifty just to be walking around yeah, being three fifty. Yeah. Like we're we're, yeah, we're not we're not right, there yet. Right. So you have to overeat, overlift, and they get those bellies hanging over there to get, to get there. But then once you're no longer hitting anybody, I'm like, uh-huh. bruh, I'm, I'm, why do I need to go lift all these weights? I'm, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not hitting nobody this weekend. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's why they just, it's like they lean out from all that beast mode muscle mass. And they're still like un- unbelievable physical specimens, way better than the average person walking the street. Boy. But it's just so interesting yeah. how you're just so big for football. And the other things I've learned from Chester Pitts, the things I've learned from you, Chester Pitts. <laughs> when you're t- we were talking about when you are a professional football player and you are trained to uh, every weekend you want like I'm gonna kill I'm gonna go out just want to kill like yeah I kill on the field and then off there you're like dun 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 mm-hmm. people want me to be nice and pick daisies it doesn't work like that a lot of times the mental it, game of football still ex- stays with you it's extremely difficult to fully change over I mean you are expected mm-hmm. on every Sunday. To go out there and do whatever it takes to win the game. Well, you're not going to, j- just off physical gifts and, 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 and physical abilities, that ain't enough because mm-hmm. everybody has that. So if you don't carry, you got to carry emotion mm-hmm. into this game to push you beyond and push you further. Whether it's anger, whether it's fear, whatever is a motivator that gets you to amp your body up just a little bit more. Right. You've got to find that every week. And then shut it off when you four and, hours later? How's yeah, that possible? Yeah. Shut that off. You got to go home after a loss with your family. It's, They're all there to have fun and have barbecue and eat and everyone's... And you're like... But, that, but that's hurt. the beauty of having family. The guys that don't have family are the ones that have the toughest time turning it off. So the family balances you really? out. Absolutely. When they you come out them. and you see your wife and you see your kids, mm-hmm. murder, death, kill, <laughs> kind of settles down. Yeah. And here, whoops, give me a hug. Come give daddy a hug. When that takes over, that that very that yeah. helps that transition. That's, That's true. But if you don't have a two-year-old little mama... Mm-hmm. I mean, come on! It's, it's it's very tough. It's tough to make that transition. Somebody's asking on text if Chester Pitts could if Chester Pitts put, could <laughs> tell. I cannot read today. If Chester Pitts could tell Tunsil something, what would it be? Tell him to stop doing false starts. Well, look here, buddy. Oh, he said, man. Look, here, look, look here, buddy. <laughs> would, would you, or let would it you rather? Uh-huh. Would you rather? The pro Bowler people. A man jump off sides on a play where he's got a chance that he's going to get beat. And save the future of the franchise. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> say, mm-hmm. I'm, there's no way I'm going to get a false star penalty. And then the $300 million soon to be quarterback <laughs> yeah. gets blasted in the back of the head. <laughs> right. Yeah, <that's laughs> exactly. The point. <laughs> what would you rather have? I like that answer, Chester. Marks. I like that answer. <laughs> Go Texans. 3.30 tomorrow. Thanks, Chester. The Texans you're take on the Browns. Oh, uh, if you're going to the stadium, go early, 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 early. After this win. Yep. Oh, my God. I know. We're after so excited. This, this is so great. Go, D'Amico. Go, Let's CJ. Go. go, team. Here's Let's one go. more for you. Get it. Hey! Yay! Nothing, nothing yeah. better. Home right. is awesome. Now we're going to get in a really good mood for the Friday Free For All because of the weekend. We've got football. Some people have Monday off. This is a feel good. We'll get to it next on The Real and Ryan Show.